Hello, in this video I'm gonna walk you through the financial model Excel template. I will show you the main inputs, the core outputs, reports and charts. So let's get started. On the dashboard tab you can input the core inputs related to the model. You can see the core financials and core charts based on the calculations within the model. Let's start from the core inputs. So first of all, you need to input your occupancy plateau. For example, let's say it will be 70%, which means that 70% of your working time will be uh, used, used for services. And then you can input months to reach this plateau, for example, four months, which means that in the first month you'll have 25% of plateau, then 50%, then 75% and then on the last month you'll have 100% of your maximum occupancy plateau which is 70%. Then you can input working hours per month, let's say it will be 140. You can also input count of stations which you'll have in your salon, for example it's 3. Then you can input safety stock which is related to the extra products which we'll discuss later. Let's imagine you will have safety stock for your products, for example, 25%. Now we can input sales mix by main job types. So we have services names, which you can change. For example, this is haircut, this is a tattoo, etc. etc. So you can input sales mix by these products. Let's say 40% will be haircut, tattoo will take 20%. And all other things will take up to 100% in total. Then you can input how much jobs per hour you can take for these services. For imagine, you can do two haircuts per hour and one tattoo per hour. Uh, so now you can input your prices per job. So for example, haircut will be $100, then it will grow for $10 each year example like this. Immediately after you will change these numbers, you can see that revenue breakdown is updated based on these updated numbers. So now you can go to the revenue tab to input your extra products. You have up to five different products assumptions or product groups. So you can input product A, product B, whatever name you need to use. You can input the launch date for this product, for example, June 20. Uh, the sales per month, which will be initial amount or base amount, can be 150. Then you can input annual sales growth, so for example 10%. This means that then in the next year you will grow 10% in comparison to initial or base sales per month. Then you have product price, for example $200, and you have margin can be 40% for example to calculate your costs. Once you input all the revenue, expenses, wages, assets, etc. assumptions, you may review the core financials related to this model, which consists main PL, line items, cash flow line item, and balance sheet cash balance. You may also review the revenue breakdown tab, profitability chart, cash flow chart and cumulative cash flow. On the income statement tab, you may see your main components of your profit and loss, which is total revenue, total cost of goods sold, gross margin, total variable expenses, total admin salaries and wages, total fixed expenses, EBDA, depreciation and amortization, EBIT, interest expense, net profit before tax, your corporate tax and as a result net profit after tax. Please note that each category has its own subcategories, so you may click on this plus button and see the detailization, for example, for fixed expenses or for variable expenses or, for example, for the revenue. On the cash flow statement you may see your cash flow broken down by cash flow from operating activities, cash flow from investing activities and cash flow from financing activities. The same information you may see on the cash flow statement in a direct method, operating, investing and financing activities, but in more collapsed form. Just easier to see the information here. 
and the balance sheet will show you the breakdown of your current assets, non-current assets, current liabilities, non-current liabilities and equity by its subcategories. The summary of three statements you may find on the financial statement summary tab. On the top you have income statement broken down by five years and the selected year which you can change here broken down by months. Below you may see the same information on the chart form. The next set of tables and charts will show you the balance sheet, main KPIs broken down by five years and selected year by months. And the last part will show you the cash flow statement breakdown for the five years and for 12 months for the selected year, as well as charts with the same information. On the financial charts step, you may see two sets of charts with breakdown of two years by months and five years by months. On the top, you may see the revenue breakdown, which is breakdown of selling jobs revenue and extra products revenue by months for two years and for the five years. The next set of charts shows you selling jobs revenue breakdown by different service categories. The next one will show you the extra products revenue breakdown by different products. The next one will show you operating cash flow broken down by cash inflow and cash outflow for two years and for the five years. The next one will show you the cash balance and the last one shows you the EBJ breakdown by total revenue, COX and OPEX. And as a result in yellow line you may see your EBJ value by months. On the operational chart step as well as on financial charts you may see two sets of charts with breakdown for 24 months and for the 5 years. On the top you may see employee productivity which shows you revenue per one employee and OPEX per one employee by months. The next one will show you productivity per station, which is average revenue per station and average OPEX per station. And the time productivity is the last one set of charts, which shows you the revenue per one working hour and the OPEX per one working hour. On the KPI benchmark step, you may see your main KPIs and you can compare them by industry benchmarks in your region or country. These yellow cells are also changeable. For example, in your country, in your region, this beauty salon uh, standard industry KPI is 55%. So this is updated on the chart here. And as a blue values or blue columns, you can compare with values calculated by the model. Additionally, you can compare EBITDA percentage, wages as a percentage of revenue, OPEX and clients per month per employee. All this information you may see on the charts below. Again, in all the charts, blue columns are calculated by the model. The orange one is industry KPIs benchmarks. On the top revenue tab, you can see the revenue breakdown by rooms revenue, events revenue, bar revenue and restaurant revenue. Also, you may see the breakdown of absolute values by years and percentage allocation by years. The same information you may see on the charts below. So here you may see the percentage allocation and the absolute values allocation. On the revenue depths and monthly run rate charts, you may see the detailed year, which you can change here. You can see the absolute values and percentage allocation of your revenue streams. On the revenue bridge, you may see the main drivers of your revenue growth between two years. Years are changeable also, so you can set up starting from 2021 to 2023. So on the left side of this chart, you may see 2021 revenue. On the right side, you may see 2023 revenue amount. And in between, you may see the main components of your revenue growth. On the top expenses tab, you may find the breakdown of top four expenses categories and all other expenses collapsed into other category. You may see the breakdown of absolute values broken down by years with a total below. And also to the right, you may see the percentage breakdown of these expenses. 
The same information you may see on the charts below, which you may find the percentage breakdown and the absolute values breakdown. On the couple of charts below, you may find expenses depth and monthly run rate for selected year. You are able to change this year. And you may see the absolute values and percentage breakdown on the pie chart. On the expenses bridge, you may find the main drivers of expenses growth between these two years. These years are, are also changeable. So you may select the first year and you may select the last year. And you may see that total expenses starting in 2020 will change to total expenses in 2024 by this waterfall. On the break-even tab, you may find the calculation of revenue break-even level and break-even chart. For this particular, particular use case, you may find that your revenue break-even level is less than actual revenue calculation. This means that company is profitable. On the valuation tab, you may see the calculation of company valuation based on the cost of equity, which you may input here. Cost of loans you previously inputted in on the dashboard. Calculation of resource share you may see here. There is also tax rate. And here we find the weighted average cost of capital. In the valuation model, there is two valuation methods, which is EBJ multiple and revenue multiple. You may select one of them and below you may input multiple of methods. Based on this information, we can see terminal value, which is calculated on unlevered free cash flow. You may see the present value of unlevered free cash flow and PV and multiplicator evaluation for this particular company. The color coding in the model is very simple. You may change any yellow cell in any yellow sheet within the model. This means that this yellow cell has some input, assumption or driver which impacts the calculation within the model. Blue sheets means that on these sheets there are some charts, reports and other information which can be useful for reporting purposes. On the tabs without color, we have some extra calculations related to revenue, to debts, equity, inventory and everything which is needed for the report, reporting. Additionally, you have contents tab, which allow you to navigate across the model very simple. So you may click on any report and you can go back. It is broken down by reports, assumptions, statements and setup. There is short explanation about what each tab does. But if you want to know more, you can go to how to and to see more detailed, ex detailed explanation of what each tab does and what inputs you may find on this sheet and what kind of outputs you may find on, th on this sheet as well. Any header of this section is also clickable. So you may click on, for example, book assets and you go directly to this tab. On the wages tab, you can input your headcount by categories with hire and fire date, with annual salary, with ability to input different number of employees by years, with annual salary rise percentage, with monthly bonus and tax rate. Let me give you a couple of examples. Let it be CFO, which you are going to hire in March 20. You are not going to fire him, so the fire date will be December 24. So annual salary can be $50,000 and this will be one CFO over the time. So you may see one CFO, which is one headcount starting from March till the end of the model, which is December 24. Also, you can input 5% of salary growth rate. You may see the amounts by years connected to this annual salary and impacted by annual salary rise. Let's set up 10% monthly bonus and 5% of tax rate. So you may see below the calculation of salary broken down by months. 
monthly bonus, which is 10%, and 5% of monthly taxes related to the payroll. Another option to be admin account, which will start April, which will grow till the end of the model with annual salary of $30,000. Let it be in year number one, two, then four, six, eight, and ten headcounts. Three percentage of annual salary grows, five percentage of monthly bonus, and five percentage of payroll tax rate. So in here you may see total staff numbers, which is two for the year number one, 2020. Starting from year 2021, you have four, then six, eight, and ten in the last year of the model. Again, calculation of salaries for these two, in this case four, it counts, calculation of bonuses, and calculation of monthly base taxes. You may see an income statement, total salaries and wages, and here you may see the total amount of bonuses, payroll taxes and wages for these accounts. On the fixed expenses tab, you may input up to 15 line items for your fixed expenses. Let me show you how it works. For example, we have utilities. You will start pay starting from March 20 till the end of the model, which is December 24. You may see it here. Let's pretend periodicity will be daily with amount of $50 per day. So you may see this amount in here. It is calculated based on count of days within this month. So obviously in March 20 you have 31 days. That's why you will have 1550. In April you have 30 days. This means this will be $1500. Also you have ability to input some growth rate year over year. Once you input this growth rate you will see that your utilities will grow over year over year. Let me give you a couple of other expenses types. For example, advertising. Let it start in March and finish in August 24. This will be on a weekly basis with amount of $100 without any growth. So start, starting from March till August 24, you have $400 per month, which is four weekly payments each month. And that's it. Another option is B-weekly, for example, $500. You can start from July, for example, and you'll have two payments, which is two B-weekly payments within the month. $500 multiplied by two, you have $1,000 per month. Again, you can input some growth rate and you will see that your advertising expenses will grow year over year till the August 24, which is the last date of this expense type. Another option, office setup, which can be one time payment, which will happen in February 20 with amount of $5,000. Obviously, you should not input any gross rates because this is just one-time fee. And you may see that office setup will happen in February 20 with this amount. Another option, insurance. Let it be start from January 20 till the end of the model. And it can happen monthly with $1,000 per month with 5% of gross first year, 3% of growth second year, 2% of growth third and 1% in year number 4. So you may see this calculation here, starting from January 21 it will grow for 5% which is $50 and starting from January 22 it will grow for 3% which is additionally $32. Another option, quarterly 
you may see that insurance will be paid $1,000 each quarter. You can start it, for example, from February, and this will be shifted to one month forward. Another option, semi-annually, in this case you will have insurance payments once per half a year, again with a percentage of growth. And the last option is annual payments or yearly payments, you will pay one time per 12 months, starting from February till December 24. For each expense type you can use growth rate and the calculation you may see in here. Also, in income statement, you may find total fixed expenses group. If you will ungroup this section, you can see these amounts broken down by months and by fixed expenses line items. On the variable expenses tab, you can input your variable expenses as a percentage of total revenue. Let me show you how it works. For example, bank fees. And your bank fees is 2.5 percentage of your revenue. So, in the same way as your revenue grows over time, you may see that bank fees will grow as a percentage of this total revenue. The same way you can input other variable expenses, like for example 5 percent, direct labor, like 15 percent of total revenue. And below you may see the calculation of these variable expenses by months. So these expenses will be connected to the income statement tab, section variable expenses. And you may see these line items by months and break, broken down by expenses types. You may input up to 20 development expenses categories. Let me give you a couple of real examples. For example, this will be kitchen and other development expenses. You can input purchase date for each category. For example, February and March. You can input spending $50,000, $10,000, for example. You can also use payment delay feature, which means that if you will select for the kitchen two months, will pay in April for the kitchen and for example three months for other development expenses which means that you will pay for it in June 20. The total amount of development expenses connected to the assets tab. Let me see it here. By default the useful time for development capex is five years so you may see the calculation of depreciation and closing netbook value. We are also able to input up to six other assets, for example, other, capex, with launch date, for example, June, with three years of useful time, with $5,000 cost. You may see the calculation here. So, in this step, you have calculation of capital expenditure, book depreciation, and closing netbook value. The total amounts you may see in income statement tab, in depreciation section for the cash flow you can see the fixed assets capital expenditure and in the balance sheet you may see fixed assets assets closing book value and capex prepayments in case of you will prepayment prepay these amounts and it will pay in some months after you will have capex payable because we set up two and three months payment delay you may see that we have capex payable I can also remove here or select zero months. In this case, capex payable will be zero, but we'll have just fixed assets, amounts broken down by months. On the capitalization table, you can input different founders and investors contributions broken down by different dates of funding different cost of share for each series and you can see the dilution of shares after each round and pre-money total equity and post-money total equity. Let's pretend that we have two founders, founder 1, founder 2. 
So total amount of shares for founder one can be 10,000. For founder number two, 20,000. Let's imagine that cost of share will be $2 and the date of founding is February. This means that investment for founder one is $20,000, for founder two is $40,000. In total, they invest $60,000 thousand dollars which you may see here the dilution is 34 33 to 67 percentage of shares so let's pretend that for series a we have one investor and the date of issuance is may cost per share is five dollars per share and number of shares is one thousand so total amount of investment will be five thousand dollars you may see that before the series a total equity was sixteen thousand dollars after sixty five thousand dollars and investor one will have 3.23 percentage of shares and the shares of founder one and founder two also diluted 32.26 and 46.52 percentage you can also input some amounts for series B and series C. The same way you can set up the date, cost of share, and up to five investors with up to five placeholders for number of shares. The amounts of funding you may see in the cash flow, in the ordinary equity risings, and you may see the balance sheet, which shows you the total equity by months. Also on the top of the dashboard we have debt assumptions. Let me show you how it works. So for the each debt you are able to select the debt type. There are two debt types in the model which is annuity and usual. Annuity means that each monthly payment which consists your debt repayment plus interest expenses will be equal each month. In case if you will select usual your main debt repayments will be equal parts and interest will be just interest on the debt's closing balance. Let me give you an example how it works. So you may input some amount of the debt, the launch date, term, the 60 months, and interest can be 5%. You may also input the grant, which is just simple amount which is paid in some specific months and that's it no repayments no terms in terms of interest so all the calculations of the debt you may see on the capital tab calculations for the debt number one debt number two debt number three total debts with grants these calculations impacts income statement interest expenses the cash flow, interest paid, debt drawdowns, debt repayments, and on the balance sheet, you have the debt closing balance. On the top of the dashboard, you have currency denomination and taxes setup. So, currency inputs means that you can input all your drivers for the model using one currency you have currency outputs it can be the same as currency inputs and it can be different from currency inputs so let me give an example when you input in united states dollars you have euro as an output and for this case you can set up currency exchange rate this is 1.2 for example in this case you will have in the model all your inputs in United States dollars, all your outputs in euros, and there will be conversion rate between currency inputs and currency outputs. Additionally, you have denomination, which means that you can denominate all your outputs on the reports. In this example, you have denomination is 1000, means that your outputs is denominated by 1000 
you can select millions you may see that now it is in million dollars you can set also billions or without any denomination additionally you have corporate tax setup you can change this number and this will impact tax expenses in your income statement I hope you enjoyed my video thanks for reviewing this uh, you can find more on my website finmodelslab.com and we'll see you later in the next videos.